Joining us right now is Dr. Scott Gottlieb. He is former FDA commissioner and a CNBC contributor who serves on the boards of both Pfizer and Illumina. He's got a new book out this week called Uncontrolled Spread, Why COVID-19 Crushed Us and How We Can Defeat the Next Pandemic. And Scott, let's weigh in very quickly on, on, on Meg's news on this, what we're hearing about remdesivir and uh, how useful it's been. I mean, this has been a tough one to kind of pick up traction just because it's, it, it is difficult to make sure that you can go for three IV treatments. You have to be in a hospital setting. And again, if you're not all that sick, that may not sound very appealing. Yeah, and look, this this is um, the beginning, I think, of a, a broader counterattack against the virus. We're going to have small molecule inhibitors of viral, viral replication that can be used in an outpatient setting to prevent progression to symptomatic disease and more severe disease, especially in high-risk patients. Remdesivir has been an active antiviral. We have the monoclonal antibodies. There's a number of small molecule drugs in development, drugs that could be taken as pills. So I think you're going to see a steady... Um, drumbeat of new innovations. There's a lot of things in the pipeline. Pfizer has a drug in advanced development, the company I'm on the board of. So does uh, Merck. There is a drug in advanced development a little further behind by Roche. All look promising. So you're going to start to see new innovation come into the market. So we're not just dependent upon vaccination, but in high-risk individuals who are vaccinated who still have breakthrough infections or those who choose to go unvaccinated and get infected, there's going to be therapeutic options. How, how quickly are we talking? Is this the end of this year into the beginning of next year or uh, later than that? I think that there's a potential that the drugs by Merck and Pfizer in it are in advanced stages of clinical development. There's the potential that you could have data before the end of this year that could support a market authorization from either of those drugs. Roche is a little bit further behind, but the drug looks promising as well. The studies are hard to do because if you're doing a study to try to demonstrate that you prevent pro progression to severe disease in an outpatient setting, first of all, most patients don't um, progress to severe disease. And second of all, a lot of people at this point have either been infected with COVID or vaccinated against COVID. So your pool of patients who are vulnerable to severe disease is small. So it's harder to enroll those vulnerable patients. So in many cases, we're going to have to do these trials outside the U.S. at this point. I, I guess the confusion that kicks in here, um, th these would be things that would be easier to prescribe, easier to, to give. It would not need to be taking place in a hospital setting. Is that the key? That's just a pill or something you take at that point? Potentially. The drugs that are being developed are being formulated in ways that they could be taken as a pill. They're small molecule drugs. So you could, have, you could eventually have a Tamiflu-like drug that we have for influenza for coronavirus. There's nothing about this coronavirus that's so innately complex that we shouldn't be able to come up with a drug that inhibits aspects of how it replicates, that we could take early to prevent viral replication, to reduce the viral load, to keep people from getting very sick. Um, just like we have a drug for influenza in the form of Tamiflu, I, we're going to eventually have such a drug for coronavirus. One or more of these drugs is going to work. And if it's not one of the drugs that's currently in advanced development, there's a lot of money going into new innovation across the biotech industry to look at ways to inhibit this virus to keep it from replicating. And again, it's not a wily virus. This isn't a complex virus that replicates through mechanisms we don't understand. All the components of how this coronavirus replicates in other settings, we've developed drugs against those targets. You know, I know a few people who have used Tamiflu, but it, it's never been widely picked up uh, for, for a number of reasons. First of all, you have to get a flu test. You have to get the flu test very quickly to confirm that's what it is. You have to have a doctor prescribe you Tamiflu. Are, are, are these new things for COVID going to be easier to get? Will it ever be over the counter or is it going to be a similar setup like that? I think it potentially could be easier to get an intervention in the setting of coronavirus that can help restore progression to disease even relative to what we have available in the setting of influenza. Because with influenza, it's a shorter incubation period. So the period in which you get infected and you actually become symptomatic is shorter than with, with coronavirus in many cases, although with coronavirus it's highly variable. And also, the old paradigm was we didn't have home diagnostics. You had to go to your doctor's office and get swabs. So the period that it took to actually get diagnosed with influenza was long. Some doctors would prescribe it prophylactically or they would prescribe it on exposure, but many doctors would wait to have a confirmed diagnosis of influenza, and that might take 24 to 48 hours. Now we have the advent of home testing for COVID, and I think we'll soon have the advent of home testing for influenza. That's going to really facilitate the ability of someone to get diagnosed quickly, maybe after an exposure, and get treated very quickly. And the drugs that are in development for the treatment of coronavirus are also being looked at um, for the prevention of onset of infection, so as a prophylaxis. So if you're exposed to coronavirus and you're at high risk of having a bad outcome, if, in fact, you become infected, 
if the drugs proved to be safe and effective, they could also be used in that way as well as a prophylaxis.